Hello, friends. Welcome back to A Perfect Union Podcast. My name is Nathan Gangadine, and I am joined, as always, with my father, Ashok Gangadine. And we are embarking on our next journey, which builds on... I mean, all of these episodes are... Um, supporting one another uh, in, in a really profound way. And we are indeed improving uh, uh, most of this and just just uh, jazzing really in this process. But um, this is certainly building off of where we started to get to in the last episode, which um, was addressing rational intelligence and lensitivity as the higher form of the of being human, uh, as my dad was calling it, logo sapien is a, the name that we've coined for that. Taking the Homo sapien to the next level of really of maturation. It's a mature human is a logos sapien, a, a rationally awakened uh, person with lensitivity understands that there are there. Uh, participating in the interpretation of reality and that we each have our lenses and that that does not mean that the, 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 the end game is there's no truth and that there's only opinion, but rather there is a meeting place that is beyond the, uh, all versions and lenses beyond, but all, but, but right here that we have access to. That's the logos. That's Sophia. That's, that, that's, that's wisdom. Um, that's love. That's intelligence, and that's rational intelligence. And, and, and without that, when we're crawling, rationally crawling, in that more adolescent stage of our, of our development, um, we see what we've got now. And there's so much beauty, guys. There's so much beauty in the arts and the sciences and just people being good. I, we want to always reiterate, we see the innate goodness in people, which is exactly why we're doing this. It's not at all to put anyone down for not seeing this already or not getting this. It's because of love and compassion that we share this to help us finally no longer have to suffer the way we, we are as individuals and as a people. You know, we don't have to cause see all this destruction and stand by and shrug our shoulders, but we can awaken our, our golden rage and say enough is enough. It is time for us to step into our true nature. And while there may be a part of us that feels maybe uh, some, some, some trepidation in embarking on that path, that's appropriate. That's how you know it's the real deal because it is shaking us from our from our cozy, comfy sleep and slumber that is leading to 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 the, the disasters we're seeing all around us, including the 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 real danger of aborting the possibility of we, the people, democracy, you know, and we've got this, we, we, we love to think that we have this really unassailable uh, structure that the constitution granted us and the, the, the three branches of government and, and, and wow, we, you know, we can f feel safe with that. It's like, okay, yeah, well, we're good. We're nothing can stop us because we, it's built in. Well, is it? Because right now what we're seeing is a very real possibility of, of, of even the three branches of government, which is supposed to keep everything in balance, being all thrown into an ideological game that is undermining the very meaning of, of democracy. And so this is really happening right now. And you know what, guys? The, 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 the thing that's going to allow it more than anything is our obliviousness, our complacency, our ignorance. You know, and when I say ignorance, not an insult. Ignorance is what you get when we don't take these steps to wake up to the rational call that's been there from the beginning, guys. I mean, we're talking thousands of years back. We have we have resources to us that can show us the 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 real. It's almost like the 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 untold drama of the human race is this long sought after higher level of being human and uh, and human is higher level of humanity you know that 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 we have been um groping for and and struggling for and all of these things that we've seen like like ending slavery and and uh in the the moment of 1776 that we revere so much in 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 the United States as as a moment of becoming a, an independent nation and countless and women getting the right to vote and um and and you know just all of the countless moments through our history where we have overcome these these 
things that we are we know are wrong in our in the fibers of our of our being and our body and our hearts and our souls we know when something is just not right why because of precisely what we're saying we are logo sapiens waiting to happen and now is now is the time now's the time the opening song <laughs> now is the time for for us to step into this and get in touch with our golden rage and so I want to hand it off earlier than usual to uh, my dad because he's got some amazing insights here in terms of, you know, what is the monoarchy? We, we've, we heard of the monarchy, right? Um, but the title, the title of this uh, episode, you know, seeing and understanding this monoarchy um, is as the essence, the, the science behind any archy, meaning in this sense, archy in a... Uh, uh, um, dictatorship or a monarchy or any form of despotism that, that, that we can think of all have something in common. What's the essence of it? What's the code behind it? Well, that's what we're calling the monoarchy. So you can go from a, a monarchy and, and, you know, okay, we're an independent nation. The British uh, are no longer ruling over us, but then we could be still be ruling over ourselves in a kind of monoarchy. And if we don't understand that, we can have three branches, five branches, 20 branches of government. And if they're all, if we don't, if they're not sourced, as we like to say, if it's not in touch with the foundational principles that give them their credibility and their, 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 uh, their power to protect, to protect the balance, then it's going to, it's going to fall out of balance. And we're seeing that now And a, tr a, a three branch government can become a triarchy. So that's just to get the conversation going, Dad. I wonder if you can say what I'm trying to say with more, um, <laughs> uh, more force, let's say, uh, or clarity. But that's how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it as a as a up, utmost importance right now for us, for the, everyone to get this, not just the leaders of the of government, but um, but for everyone to understand this in order to prevent this uh, this looming danger of abor aborting our sacred experiment. It's beautifully said, Nath. I don't know if I'll speak with more force uh, or <laughs> clarity than, than you have done, but uh, just to build, I'd like to, 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 to just take it from there. And uh, because we're improvising, we're, we're, we're dancing together, and I love dancing in this way with you in dialogue. And uh, the point you made about the monoarchy, I mean, well, one of the things we did in our opening episode of 7076 Now is to look at the opening lines of the 7076 Declaration, which is an amazing moment, if you really understood it. You could read it with a Google uh, mind, a Google lens, right? Everyday uh, information eyes, or you could see that it's a call of wisdom. Our elders, our founders, men and women, uh, at that period were really groping to find the, the highest logos, the, 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 the land of the free, uh, the source of, of the unity, the unum pluribus. There you are, e pluribus unum. That was right there. What, that, that's a law of reason. What is the law of reason? Why? Because the Logos is infinite. Bam, that's right, right there. Whatever name you use for the ground floor of being, you can't draw a boundary around it, you can't delimit it or limit it. And if you use the Yahweh, Yahweh is infinite, infinite being, infinite word, in the beginning is Yahweh. Allah, infinite, Allah. Right? Brahman, I go to India, right? Infinite being. The being is India. Om, the infinite Om, the infinite word, right? And yoga is a technology of crossing from everyday mind, which is like a f crawling mind, flatline mind, in the cave, into the light of Om, into the light of Buddha, attempting to end the human suffering, right? The whole point is not to do an academic theory about reality, but to remove the error of suffering. This is Buddha, and his great breakthrough of the, uh, which he delivered as the Four Noble Truths to humanity, all humans across the planet, it was a global moment, right? Is that we've got to leave the mental operating process where we think we are separate beings and separate entities. That's a mono right there. We've got the monovirus. The mono is a virus. It's a stage of development. And the great teachers in the, in the biblical tradition, you call it uh, the sin condition. We don't realize how deep and dangerous sin is. What is this? It's a, an ontological uh, which is to mean our being is alienated from reality, from being itself. We're cut off from being. Sin is being severed and alienated and cut off from being. You go east, what is it? Samsara. What is that? The place of suffering of humanity. Why? Because we're in mono. We've got the monocode. We've got the monovirus. 
What's that? That is a, a naive presumption, which you referred to earlier as a crawling space, the flat mind, the flat land, uh, uh, whatever, the flat word. When it's flattened, it's not enriched dimensionality. It's having a lens and being living in a code of information that is following a profound law that's across a planet that makes our technology and mind processing of culture making A is A. Every name is separate. Every A is, has got its own ID. And we know how to put the Lego pieces. That's Legoland. That's Monoland, right? And we have a lens that we developed and we play that. And that technology allows us a vast range of cultures and worldviews and narratives and perspectives, alternative disciplines and ways. And it's boundless. And yet it's in the same boat. That's the point. The vast diversity of, of cultures and religions and scriptures and way of pro mind processing. If we're using that lens and technology, it's a technology of mental processing. Right? It's software for the mind. And that's a mono. That's a mo and uh, why would you call it sin? Because it's cutting us off from the Logos, from God, from Christ, from Buddha, from Dharma, from Om, from Yoga, all of that. And from science, because science wants to get to reality, to the unified field. Right? Because, because being is the unified field. So once we realize that what's on the ground floor, reality, being, whatever name you give, it's infinite. And if it's infinite, you can't divide it, you can't have more than one. Baby stuff. Right? Baby science across the planet. Why can't you have two infinites? Because then you, they'll neutralize each other and other each other and limit each other and neither would be infinite. So it's got to be, if there's an infinite, it's got to be coherently infinitely one. Not ordinary one. That's the unum. That's the unum furious right there. That's the unum. Well, how do we get that code? That's the God code. That's a Christ code. That's a Buddha code. That's a Logos code. That's the code of 1776, the code of reason. Why? Because when we're cut off from access to the source of our being, we're out of it. We're out of reality. That's the source of the monovirus. So that the, the, what we're calling mono, and, and what's the call of 1776? It's not just to leave the monarchy and separate from that in the colonies. That was important to get an external heter heteronymous, a heterotomy, the imposition of a, a mono voice of the monarch, right? The monarchy, right? And how, we're gonna, how are we going to cure that? Because we're granted by the source, by the logos, with unalienable rights. And that's life, liberty, well-being. So that they were calling us to grow up and enter into the logos and not be stuck in conventions and codes and contracts, right, that, that, as we have up to that point, that are tribal, that are binding one people to the other with the monocode. You, you know, we're not, we're not aware of the lens that, that we're using. We have, to, we have to grow up, we have to gain lensitivity in order to cross into the dialogue, the dialogos of dialogue. We're dialogue sapiens. That's a logos sapiens, a mature human. We're capable of dialogue. And I think, no, the question you're opening up beautifully is, wow, why then have we been stuck in an ideological culture, a monoculture? monologue. Something is wrong with ideology. This would be a great follow-up session. What makes ideology a virus? Because we, all, we use the word, oh, that's a different ideology, or ideology is in the American culture. It's across the planet, but right now looking at the American lab. Why is ideology a bad thing? If I have an ideology, I have a belief system, of Christ is my Lord. Or I have an ideology of science, you know, Einstein got it right, or Newton got it right, right? Or the, 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 the digital code of, of, of the web uh, has got it right. Whatever the, whatever the story is, oh no, Allah, the Muslim, Islam is right. Or no, Om, uh, you know, yoga is right. Whatever, you know, or the feminism is right. Whatever, we can keep going on and on. Or the, you know, the new age thinkers who are teaching us, life coaching us to help us liberate and find our, our, our better selves and, 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 and flourish as human beings. They're all different telling stories. They're all narratives. And they have mono. What is mono? They're using a code, a mind operating, and a language code, and a communication code, a culture code, that we haven't really examined critically. And yet, if you stand back and zoom out and look across the planet at our great teachers and scriptures for centuries, they've been saying, folks, pay attention to how you're using your mind, because your life and your experience and your world is going to be a reflection of how you're using your mind and your lens. And that's a mono mind, the mono lens. So imagine what you just said, is having a th uh, checks and balances, three branches of government, going to solve the problem of having an external monar monarch monarchy, an extra king legislating for us? No, we don't want that. 
Well, could we have fallen into three separate, separate and equal branches in that mono space? The, the, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary, each separate but equal, checks and balances. But if they're in Legoland, Lego space, separate silos, and not in dialogos, we're going to be stalled, and we are in still the grave danger, because imagine the unlikely event that a, ma a certain uh, theory, a certain uh, ideology takes over the presidential mind. And that's, let's say, takes over some, the Senate in the Congress, let's say, or the, or the House, the same ideology. And let's say that the, the, the judiciary has been stacked to be dominated by that ideology or perspective or narrative, right? Now you have monarchy all over again. Tri in a you triarchy. Have, <laughs> a triarchy, exactly, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you, it, it, it's, so we have to face the, the, the ideology uh, virus. Mono. And, uh, so, uh, the mono, having mono, mm -hmm. right? Your lens, you're, you're privileging your lens. That's mono, it's mono, mono perspective, it's monologue. When I talk to the other from my, and I'm not aware of my lens, and I assume that I've got my own belief system and worldview and narrative and perspective, my scientific truth, whatever it is, whatever, whoever is using it, right? When you have your lens and you privilege your lens, you're, that's a kind of narrative supremacy and privileging yeah. your lens yeah. over others. And that's, 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 not a form a of, that's a form of despotism. It's a form of violence. Mm -hmm. Because mono is violating the sacredness of the dialogos, the sacred space of the logos. Rational intelligence, back again to that, right? When you, when you go from being a monologue, duking it out, that's a clash of ideology. How many of us now understand the battle, the cultural war, culture wars, ideology wars, narrative wars, for narrative supremacy in the marketplace of the polis, the civic space? That's, that's a civil war. That's been going on and raging, as long as we're in monovirus. So in other words, there has been a pandemic uh, 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 across the planet, in the human journey, that uh, we've, we've cultivated and tamed uh, information, language, and reason at that level, small r, and that's been great because we do need that information and we don't throw it out. But if we get stuck there and don't mature to dialogos, to dialogue, to the dilation of the mind, and crossing from I, it, where everything is objectified and we don't realize our violence to one another comes from objectification from the monologue pandemic, the syndemic, the samsara-demic. We've been living in a pandemic of ment mental processing and mind software, malware, that we haven't sufficiently focused and seen. And that's what we've been seeking to bring out as we mature from that stage of a, of a pathological form of rationality, if we get stuck there, to mature into a more deep and powerful, integrant, holistic, non-dualistic, non-fragmenting, Nonviolent space of compassion and the moral law. That's a logos, right. the logosphere. And, it, and, the, and it's huge what we're saying implies in case it's not obvious, which it should be at this point. We're saying we haven't become a real free people yet. That's right. We have um, a, a wonderful uh, and, and sacred and not to be uh, you know, thrown out with the bathwater system in place, we've got a, a, a really, um, you know, there's so much, I know there's so much darkness in our history and, and, and I've actually become a much more aware of that in these last number of months. Um, especially since, um, since the George Floyd killing and these certain key moments that have just, you know, I thought I was, uh, woke already. And in that, in that way of aware of just how, how deep some of these symptoms are of our nation and that it isn't, it hasn't been awesome for everybody. And, and, uh, you know, that's been something that has really been eye opening for me and understanding, wow, the history that we're carrying around with us is, is, is heavy. A lot of it. And, and there's so much amazing and beautiful breakthroughs. And I want to be very, very clear again and again, that I am in awe and in deep, profound respect for the people of this country, and and not just the you know America, um, but the world over, we we obviously are focusing as we are we are you know here in the United States, we're focusing on that, and I and I see just such an amazing, uh, heroic, um, courageous, 
uh, um, and uh, intelligence and breakthroughs through our history. And, and so while holding on to both, while seeing both, you know, pluribus unum, e pluribus unum, say, you know, we're, we're, we're holding that, that deeper lens, that unum lens that can see it in, in its entirety. And w- I've even had phases in my life where I've wanted to throw the baby out with the bathwater, where I had felt my association with the the red, white, and blue had gotten so tainted just because of of such so much of the unpleasant aspects of of what we've seen. You know, I've 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 gone through that, and yet I come out the other side where I am now. You know, uh, consciously inhabiting the land of the free, the promised land, so to speak. And, and, and celebrating our, our our wonderful history and simultaneously seeing, wow, if we can be where we are now, then we don't have a democracy yet. You know, and uh, our democracy has not matured to an unassailable we the people. You know, we haven't come to that that place. We've made incredible leaps and bounds in the in that direction, but we really have got to step up our game now. You know, and uh, so I just want to—I want to close on this note of 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 honoring all all of us, because I know, I know, just as you know, that people are good, even if they're they're sorely misguided in, in any number of ways. And you look and you see a lot of wretched behavior. There is. Let's just call it what it is. There's a lot of wretched behavior, and there's a lot of unsacred behavior, and there's a lot of violence and violation going on in that lack of lensitivity and rational intelligence being awakened. But God, we are beautiful people, and the the spirit of this offering, guys, is to invite us all into this next level of, of of being people together. And so we want to thank you for, for, for listening and, and hearing this, and this is going to keep going. We're going to keep having and developing, um, these, uh, these dialogues, these deep dialogues in hopes that you are starting to get the sense of this, you know, if we have been laboring under a kind of mono virus malware, you know, that's been blocking us, uh, you know, despite our best intentions, then man, let this let this podcast be more than just another show amongst a bunch of other podcasts. Let let it be a sanctuary for you guys as we continue. This is a space we want you to join us and bask with us and 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 develop it with us and advance it with us. You know that's our ultimate hope is that more and more people get get the the, the deep science here and start to help us to expand that and advance it and develop it. For, for the sake of, of really becoming a true we the people, land of the free. So that'll be my closing thoughts today. Uh, Dad, if you can briefly maybe sum, sum up and we'll call, it a, we'll call it a day. No, I think, Nathan, you've done it very well. I think that, that uh, you know, brings this uh, stage of the jazzing together improv uh, to, to a nice place. And it, it also shows how much we have to really dance uh, in dialogue you know, in, in terms of rich themes. And I think one thing next, you realize a step back again. So I like to zoom out uh, 2,500 years and think of this human journey of this uh, this quest for becoming, uh, you even the, say, just, just the American case, but let's just go across the Atlantic to the French Revolution. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Liberty, equality, fraternity, brotherhood, right? Uh, the people have been questing that the Chinese revolution, the Russian revolution, the whole question. We could talk about really Karl Marx and communism and going from the individualism of capitalism as one form and one worldview, then to communism. No, the polis, the community is is primary over the individual and the same boat. The different different competing narratives and ideologies can be in the same boat. They're all in the same boat of mono, the monovirus. So we need to pick up on that, Nath, and. Uh, and so, so, right. So, the, 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 in concluding, then the, to just look back at this uh, this conversation now, of rational intelligence is an evolutionary call to all humans to become awakened to the logos and move from a, a mono a life of mono malware of the mind to dialogue dialogos. That's a maturation of the human. That's a citizen to take an oath of logos to be a, a moral awakened compassionate being. That's where the genius of our planet has been calling us, all our great scriptures, religions, enlightenment teachings, to move up and change the old code that's worn out now. You've done beautifully to to kind of frame that for us. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, and you too. Thank you all for listening, and please join us next time for the A Perfect Union podcast. (laughs) 